Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about the documentary Cracked Up, the Daryl Hammond story. So I recently did um, a few reviews on different books that talk about like sort of mind-body connection stuff, um, how your mind, your traumas, you know, things that you experience as a child can lead to, you know, mental and physical illness as an adult. And in one of the books that I read, I think it was in The Myth of Normal by Gabor Mate, he talks about this documentary of Daryl Hammond. If you guys don't know who Daryl Hammond is, he's the guy from Saturday Night Live that um, used to impersonate Bill Clinton. So he's kind of, you know, a while back. You know, he's, he's a 90s, um, one of the 90s cast members. And he's a real funny guy. You know, he was well known for that impersonation, for the Bill Clinton impersonation. And, um, you know, he became famous from that. Very, very famous. And, you know, obviously you, you know, none of us knew um, what types of issues he had behind the scenes. Um, and comedians are notorious for having issues, um, which is one of the reasons why they become comedians. But he was actually um, pretty brutally abused as a child. Now, I did talk about another book. <laughs> I did a review on a book, and you'll probably see it. If, if you haven't seen it, it's probably in my book reviews playlist. Um, it was called um, The Body Keeps the Score. And it does talk a lot about abuse, and it's very explicit. If you are sensitive to stuff like that, this this documentary actually, you know, he they do a really good job of not coming right out with it. Um, they they focus a lot on Daryl and his struggles. I think he struggled with alcohol and he was like admitted to to the hospital a few times, you know, self-harm, things like that. And he then he eventually um, ended up at a psychiatric hospital. Um, they do a good job focusing on him. And they don't really like for a while, it, I kind of felt that the documentary might have been a little bit slow. Um, but they don't talk and get very, very specific about what happened to him until kind of like the end. And even then, you know, they do get specific, but I don't think they talk about like everything that happened to him. Um, I do think that the focus was more on him and therapy and the things that he's had to do in order to um, get to a better place mentally because he was having some very serious issues. So this, this documentary is very good at showing you that connection between childhood trauma and, you know, how that leads to, to serious mental illness in adulthood. And also to how there are people, you would never suspect that they have mental health problems like that. Like I had no idea that he was actually hospitalized a few times. Um, and even some of the cast members and, you know, people from SNL talked to him and told him like, you need to get help. Um, you would never guess, you would never suspect. Um, and it does a good job of showing how some people are very functional, not just very functional, but very successful while dealing with serious trauma and addiction and, and mental health problems. Um, it, I feel like it gives almost a more realistic portrait of mental illness because, you know, we all, we look at mental illness and we think, oh, it's like somebody, you know, you know, talking to themselves in the middle of the street or somebody that's depressed, right? And this kind of shows how, yeah, you can struggle with it, but still be successful, still show up to work, um, you know, still make a lot of money, but struggle with this in the background um, for a long time because it seemed like he was struggling for a long time and really trying to... Um, to find something that would help him. Um, but like I said, if you are sensitive to, you know, child abuse, because the abuse was when he was young, um, that, you know, this might be a little bit too much to deal with. Um, and it is physical, it is kind of 
brutal, some of the things he talks about, but he, it's not super descriptive. So you're not going to find like very explicit or graphic depictions of whatever happened to him. They, they talk about it. I think there's one situation where he does talk about it, um, or one incident, and he does kind of talk about it in a little bit more detail, but I, I did find that they did not get too super, super detailed, like one of the books that I reviewed, you know, if you've seen that review, they get, they go into very, very detail with certain abuse situations. One of the things that I liked, um, like I said, they do a very good job realistically um, presenting mental illness, right, as, as an ongoing chronic condition um, that can affect your function, you know, your your function in your personal relationships, but it doesn't actually, you know, it, it's possible that it, that you can still um, function and, like I said, be successful. But the other thing, too, that I really liked about this documentary was... You know, he, he didn't, it's very difficult to, to talk about, you know, abuse and trauma, particularly if it's, if it happened at the hands of your parents, because it was, it was his mother that was responsible, I think, for most of it. You know, there's always this how can I say it? There, there's some people love to go on and on about the things that their parents did to them. And they sound very bitter and very vindictive. Um, and we've been seeing a lot of that when it comes to, you know, Prince Harry. Um, he's kind of big in the news right now. And he's been talking a lot about everything that happened to him. And you do get this vibe of bitterness, like he's bitter and he's you know, and, and I feel like in this documentary, because the focus is more on Daryl and what he has had to do in order to find his way back to health and wellness, there isn't so much of a focus on bitterness. Um, he does, like I said, he does say who it was that abused him and, and what happened, more or less. But the interesting part, you know, there's a part at the end, well, like, I guess towards the end where he's talking, you know, with one of his childhood friends, they're adults now. And his childhood friend is like, I just, he's like, I practically lived at your house. Like, I never saw any of this. Like, he's like, I was there all the time. And your dad coached Little League and, you know, like stuff like that. And Daryl looks at him and he goes, well, who, what kinds of people do you think abuse their kids? It's people that go to church. It's people that coach Little League. He says it's, they don't look any different than anybody else, you know, and his friend, you know, and, and I, I really, that part was so heartbreaking to me because this is like his best friend from childhood. And it's like, if your best friend doesn't believe you, who is going to. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges when you when you choose to speak out about abuse, particularly at the hands of your parents. That's one of the biggest challenges is are people going to believe me? Because a lot of times they present themselves to the world and to the public in one way. And at home, they're a different way. And especially that's why some parents abuse their kids because they know that their kids can't do anything and they're not going to say anything. And he talks about that as well, that there's this expectation that you're just never going to say anything. Um, and that's why parents abuse their children and not a stranger or not each other because they know that they have a certain amount of power over their child. And so his friend actually goes and confront. This is not in the documentary. Like he did, they don't show this in the documentary. They, they, are showing that they're having this conversation. And then his friend tells him, well, you know, I went over there. I went and talked to your mom. Cause I guess Daryl hasn't seen, I, his parents I think are still alive. At least his mom is. Um, and he, his friend tells him, well, I went over there and I asked her, 
I said, is this true? Is like, is this like, cause he couldn't, he could not believe it. And he said that Daryl's mother got so angry and said that she never wanted to see Daryl, that she never wanted to hear from him again, never wanted to see him again. That she was just so, he said that her anger was just so intense. He said right away, I knew that you had told the truth because her anger was just so out there. And, you know, a lot of this, um, you know, this documentary and then the books that I have been reading, you know, I, I've been, and, and I've, I think I've talked about this before here on my channel, is that I've been debating whether I should start talking about some of the things that I've experienced within my family and some of the issues, you know, that I feel now that I've been reading about these topics, things that I feel may have contributed or may have made me more vulnerable to, be, to, to becoming chronically ill as an adult. Because in some of the books that I have read, it does show that, you know, childhood traumas and abuse and things like that can actually trigger illness in adulthood. Um, while I know that that's not 100% the case for me, I do wonder if it would be worth exploring that concept and, you know, presenting that on here because it is, it is something, you know, now that I have failed so many treatments, I've tried so many things, I wonder if a lot of this can be traced back to problems, you know, that I had in childhood. Um, and in this documentary, really, I mean, it just spoke to me a lot. It's not, like I said, it's not the fastest paced documentary. It's a little bit on the slower side. It is, it talks a lot about Daryl's career and, you know, behind the scenes stuff. But when they get to that part where they're talking about the parents and talking about, you know, how he had to confront the things that had happened to him. You know, that was, you know, in order for him to recover, because he was an alcoholic, he had been hospitalized a few times, he was self-harming, and they had to figure out a way, you know, and it's very, very delicate. If if you've read any of the books that I've talked about, um, for example, um, The Body Keeps the Score, it's a very, very delicate dance to do therapy with somebody who has been severely traumatized. It's not easy. It can be very successful and it can help that person become much more functional, but it's hard to do it right and to, and to get that person to that place. And, you know, at the end of the documentary, he talks about how he is now in that place. He actually goes to his childhood home and spoiler alert, he goes to his childhood home and he says, you know, I never would have been able to do this without like throwing up or having a severe panic attack or just falling apart. He said, I never would have been able to do this without all of the therapy and, and everything that I've done um, in his hospitalization in a psychiatric hospital. Um, he said, I, I just, you know, I, I never could have gotten to this place. And, you know, when I see things like that, it is very inspiring. If it could do that for your mental health, and we know that mental health and physical health is is connected, I wonder what that could do for somebody with a chronic condition like mine or, or you know, anybody else. You know, the other thing that sparked my interest was the fact that, you know, in my family, the three of us, I have two siblings. Um, one of them was just diagnosed with an inflammatory, you know, autoimmune illness. And the other one is, you know, having some post-COVID issues. And I often ask myself if, you know, obviously we are genetically similar, but at the same time, we also grew up in the same family. And so now that I see what's happening to my siblings, you know, and having had all of this ha happen to me over the many, many years, I start to wonder if there is a component, um, a family component to it and whether that would be worth addressing on this channel. Um, you know, those of us that have grown up in sort of dysfunctional uh, homes, we know the consequences of getting caught if we talk about the things that happened to us. You know, we are, so, we are in, a, in a way sworn to secrecy 
you know, we don't even have to be told, don't talk about this. We just know that it's a given or else, or else, right? Um, but that is part of the problem. And I am seeing that from the books that I've been reading and, you know, from this documentary that part of the issue is not addressing the issue. Part of the issue is staying quiet and not really, not being able. And, and it's really bizarre how in the last few years that has been something at the forefront of my mind of I want to talk about this like I wish I had someone to talk to besides my therapist about these issues because they affect me all the time they continue to affect me because I'm still living in the same home um, and I wonder if the fact that I cannot recover or I can't make any progress with my condition if that is linked to my living situation. You know, my living situation, my upbringing, and all of the stress that came with that. Um, and so th this is a really good, you know, documentary, you know, to show that, you know, you, you don't always end up completely debilitated. You don't always end up chronically ill, you know, sick, stuck at home. He was very mentally ill, but he was working. And he was, I think he's one of the longest running cast members on Saturday Night Live. He was there for many, many years and he was incredibly successful. Yet all of this was happening in the background. Um, it is tragic. It is tragic and it is really, um, really sad that this is something that is, is probably very common, you know, and we don't, um, we don't realize how common it is, but it's, it's not something, you know, I, even though what, what I went through as a kid was not the same as what he went through as a kid, um, you know, what he suffered with, I guess, I think it was probably more severe, um, a more severe type of abuse. I noticed the similarities and the, the parallels, like he was saying, you know, the expectation is that you're never going to say anything. And, you know, nobody would ever suspect that anything like that was going on at home because they were, you know, his parents were just ordinary people coaching, you know, softball or baseball or whatever and going to church and all of that. And it's like, wow, you know, that it sounds a lot like, you know, sounds a lot like my parents. Uh, it sounds a lot like anybody's parents. Right. And. I think that that was very important that he made that point because, you know, we we look at our neighbors, we look at people that there was a case recently here in Riverside County um, of a family that had, I think, 13 kids. And these kids were being tortured for years. <laughs> the oldest daughter was like in her 30s. These kids were being tortured for for years and years and years, and none of the neighbors ever suspected anything. So, and, and you know, they were asked, they're like, you know, when the police came and, and finally found what was going on, you know, they just couldn't believe that no one had seen anything and no one, you know, but that's, that's what abuse is. It is very covert, it is very hidden. And I think it is that hiding not just the hiding of the abuse, but having to hide it yourself and having to stay quiet about it, that can, that can hurt you, you know, that can hurt you in the long run, whether it turns into a mental illness or a physical illness. And so I feel like that might be worth addressing on this channel. If you guys are interested in hearing about something like that, um, you know, I'm, I kind of want to, you know, take the dive and do it. Um, it would have to be done very carefully. <laughs> But if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments um, and and share your experiences, if that's something that you're comfortable with, um, because I do think that that is a huge component. And, and Gabor Mate does talk about that in his book, that the people that are sort of, um, the people that are very, very nice, you know, there's a personality type that is linked to ALS, and they're typically very, very nice people, people that, you know don't want to inconvenience anybody else and that, you know, and for whatever reason he has seen that personality type um, consistently with people that have ALS. So there may be a link there between those types of, you know, those types of issues and physical illness. 
But anyways, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will try to keep bringing you guys videos. I have, you know, not been feeling well, so um, I'll do my best to give you guys something. Um, but yeah, just hang in there with me and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.